Hey guys, I'm going to teach you how to make a cool looking 3D model for your portfolio from start to finish. I'm going to cover everything you need to know, how to model your weapon with sub D, how to unwrap the UVs, how to texture your model in Blender with simple materials, how to set up the lighting and how to do a little bit of compositing to improve your final render. Everything can be done in Blender except the compositing which will be done in After Effects. So without further ado, let's get started. So let's add a plane. In wireframe mode, I'm going to align it with the picture. And with the knife tool, I add some vertices to cut the shape of the blade. Delete the unnecessary faces. Connect the vertices. Add a mirror modifier and apply it. Select the knife tool again and add two cuts to sharpen the corner. Remove the unnecessary edges. Add some edge loops on the side of the blade, connect the vertices and add a mirror modifier. Add a bunch of edge loops on the blade and connect them. Add a solidify modifier to give your plane some thickness. Then add an edge loop in the middle. To get that sharp look on the sharp side of the blade, select this edge and slide it by pressing GG. But make sure to click on the auto merge vertices button first. Add a mirror modifier. Delete the bottom of the mesh. Put the 3D cursor at the base of the blade. Select the top faces and put the pivot point to the 3D cursor. You can now rotate the faces downwards to make the sharp tip of the blade. Put the 3D cursor back to the center of the object, then add a mirror modifier. Select this edge loop and make it flat. I used the set flow add-on to do that, it's a free add-on, the link is in the description. Put the minimum angle to 180 degrees to flatten everything, mirror it to the other side. Adjust the curvature of the blade and add a support loop. Select the sharp edges and add a bevel with a profile of 1. Press P to adjust the profile and press A to make it bigger or smaller. Press C to avoid any overlapping. Merge the vertices by distance and connect the vertices of the bevel like so. Do the same at the bottom, or just use a mirror modifier. And mirror it to the other side. I added a subdivision surface modifier with one level and I applied it to get more geometry to work with. Duplicate your mesh and hide it. Select a bunch of faces, inset, right click, loop tools, and click on circle. If you don't have the loop tools menu, go to your preferences, type loop and activate the add-on. Unhide the duplicated mesh, add a subdivision surface modifier with one or two levels, apply it to increase the poly count, then select your base mesh, add a shrink wrap modifier and apply it. Select the circle, extrude it, then add a bevel like so with a profile of one, Inspect your model with a shiny matte cap to see if you have any shading problems. Let's create the handle, add a torus. In edit mode, scale it to match the picture. Right click, shade smooth, duplicate it, add a sub D modifier and apply it and hide the mesh. On the base mesh, select some faces, inset, right click, loop tools, circle. Add a shrink wrap modifier and pick the duplicated one. Select the cylinder, invert the selection, go to vertex mode and assign them to a vertex group. If you want to affect only the torus, add the vertex group to the modifier. Add a sharp bevel. Extrude and scale a couple of times to make the grip. Add a loop cut in the middle and delete the top part. Put the 3D cursor to the middle and add a mirror modifier. 
Delete the unwanted faces, add some bevels to match the curvature of the reference picture. Add enough edge loops to get squared polygons. And add some sharp bevels. I'm going to unwrap the UVs and apply some materials that I found on BlenderKit.com. BlenderKit is a free add-on that you can download on the website. The link is in the description. They have a lot of cool high quality procedural materials. I'm going to use this one. To import it in Blender, click on copy link and the material is going to be sent to Blender. Select your mesh and click on the material to apply it. I do it before I unwrap the UVs because when you apply a material from this add-on, it destroys the UVs. To unwrap the UVs, go to edit mode, select some edges, right click, mark seam, press U and unwrap. To straighten my UV islands, I use the UV square add-on, press L to select the UV islands and click on two grid by shape. Straight UV islands also take less space in the UV space. To lay out the UVs, I use UV Pack Master 3, click on heuristic search and it will automatically try to find the best UV layout to get the best resolution for your textures. To light the scene, I'm going to download this HDRI on Polyhaven. If you want to import it, you have to go to the World tab, press Ctrl T to add a texture coordinate and a mapping node. Create a camera, press Ctrl Alt 0 to move the camera to your current view. I like to put my focal length to 35mm. If you want to see your HDRI to adjust the rotation, go to Film and tick or untick transparent. Rotate the HDRI until you get the lighting that you like. I am going to add a displacement map on the handle. To be able to do that in cycles, choose experimental instead of supported. Select the handle and add a subdivision surface modifier and click on adaptive subdivision. I wanted to add this Japanese text, but I didn't find any good picture on Google image, so I made it myself in Photoshop. I made sure to export a 32 bits per channel AXR texture, but you can also use the TIFF or TGA format. I copy the dark wood material and I paste it next to the brown wood. I add a mix shader and I plug the dark wood shader output in the second input. Add an image texture and press Ctrl T to add a texture coordinate and a mapping node. Add a displacement node, connect the color to the height input and connect it to the displacement input of the material output node. Load the displacement map. Connect the color to the factor input of the mix shader to see the two wood materials. Rotate the texture and stretch it a little bit if needed. Change the displacement map color space to non-color. Go to the material tab and in the settings change the displacement mode to displacement or displacement and bump. Change the displacement values to get a result that you like. There are some nice light reflections on the displacement. Now let's add some aerial lights to improve the lighting because the HDRI itself is not enough. It's a common thing to add a 3 points light setup, but you can add as many lights as you want to get a good lighting. What I like to do is to add a bright color to see where the light affects my model. And when I think the light is in a good place, I change the color to white. If you want your 3D model to stand out from the background, you should put a light behind it. That way you will get a nice rim of light on the edges. I also want the lighting to make the weapon look sharp and intimidating. So my idea is to get a nice contrast on the blade. The sharp sides are bright and the flat side is darker. You can also change the color management to get a higher global contrast. You can adjust the spread value of your lights. A bigger number means that the light is going to be more diffused and it's going to affect a wider area of your mesh. And a smaller value means you will get a sharper and focused light on a small area. It can be useful to highlight a specific area. The size of the area light also affects the sharpness of the shadows. A very small area light is going to produce very sharp shadows and a big area light is going to produce soft shadows. When you're happy with your render, save it and export it with an alpha channel to get a transparent background. 
I'm going to do my compositing in After Effects. It's a paid software, but you can do it in Blender in the compositing tab if you want, or in DaVinci Resolve, which is free. Import your picture and create a new composition. Add a solid of any color. Drag the solid under the picture. Then add a gradient. Invert the colors and set your ramp to radial. Put the top circle at the center of the composition and drag the other one to the bottom to get a softer gradient. Change the color to get a more uniform and less contrasting gradient. Select all the layers, press Ctrl Shift C and pre-compose them. I add the magic bullet looks effect to add some color grading. It's a paid plugin, but you can do everything with the default effects, such as curves, contrast, noise, etc. I like to add a little bit of chromatic aberration, like in a real photo taken by a camera. It has to be very subtle. Add a LUT. You can find some free LUTs online. I chose one with a very high contrast and I reduce its strength. Add a colorista effect. This effect allows you to add colors to the shadows, mid-tones and highlights. I like to add a light blue in the shadows and an orange color in the highlights. Adjust the strength if you think it's too much. And finally, add some film grain to simulate a real picture. When you're done, export it. This is the final result. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. All the models that I made for my tutorials are available on my Gumroad store. You will get the blend files, the textures and materials that I used and the HDRI. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.